Hi, Kimberly. Hello. Hello? Hello, Tabitha, are you there? Okay, hello. So I think I can kick off. I was thinking that. No, you can kick off. Kimberly and uh, okay. is right here. So Kimberly, Kimberly, so sorry, my system, I don't know what happened. It just went through. But we'll continue. I'll try to send you homework and Isa. Okay, okay. I apologize for that. Yeah. No, it's fine. Thank you. Okay. I hope you gain something today in today's class. Mm -hmm. Okay, take care. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. I believe, can you hear me? I just want to be sure that you can hear me. Yes. What is the problem? Sorry, give me a minute. I don't want this. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, well, that's good. So I can hear now. Okay, sorry about that. I was trying to connect my headphone. I was struggling with that, but it's something else now. So, good day. So, um, Miss Tabitha, I can see it's only Kimberly that is here, but it's fine. We'll just go on. So are we your reasoning through language arts tutor? And today would be okay. Okay, so today we'll be treating main ideas and um, details. Main ideas and details. So before I dive into what um the main idea means i would like to hear from you kimberly so if you if you were asked um okay just literally when you hear the words um when you hear the words main idea kimberly when you hear the words um main idea about anything you're asked about okay what's the main idea of let's say someone 
um, was telling you a story or someone was saying something and you were asked, what is the main idea? What comes to your mind, Kimberly? Mm, what comes to mind is what the story is mainly about, what it revolves around. Okay. Okay, that's that's correct. That's very correct. Um, this, can you pronounce your name? I wouldn't want to. That's Dimraja, right? I just want to be sure. Yes, Raja. Isa Raja. You said? Isa Raja. Okay, Isa Raja. Am so I correct? I passed my, yes, so I passed my RLA. So I need to join or I can leave. Okay, you say you pass your RLA? Yes. Okay, so you don't want to join the class since you've passed it already now okay thank you so i can work with kimberly so but if you if you still want to be part of the class fine okay all right then okay so kimberly you were very correct so when um we say the main idea we're talking about just like the word the main the whatever the person is saying you know when someone is telling you a story the person can say a lot of things but um there's a key thing there's a key there's there's this key um information some other things added i can tell you okay um i'm a girl um miss tabitha i'm this i'm 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 a, I'm a woman i'm a this i'm a that i'm a this all of the whole um, description I'm giving to you still boils down to the fact that I am Miss Tabita. So I am Miss Tabita, and um, I am a, I am I am Miss Tabita. So every other thing I'm talking about is just to support the fact I'm about who I am. So let's move on. So the main idea in a passage is the most important point or message that the author is trying to convey. For every, for every passage, for every story, for for every, um, whether it's a long passage, whether it's a short passage, the author has the uh, most important points, the most important message that he's trying to convey. It is the big picture or the central theme of what the author is talking about. Now, identifying the main idea involves um, figuring out what the passage is mostly about. You have to be very careful. When you are reading through passages, you have to be very careful to, to be able to identify, okay, I think this is the main thing. So you don't get confused about um, um, the other supporting ideas or the other supporting um, information added to it. You have to be very careful when you are reading through every passage to know that, to know the main, the big picture, to know the central theme that the author is um, trying to tell you. So to do this, you can look for keywords or phrases. You can look for keywords or phrases that are repeated throughout the passage. Pay attention to the topic sentences of paragraphs and consider the overall structure of the writing. We'll be seeing a lot of examples, so you would understand, Kimberly. So ask yourself what the author is trying to tell you. You understand. When you are reading um, through every passage, the thing that should always come to your mind is, what is, the, what is this author trying to tell me? Do you understand? What, what is the what is the what is the um what is the most important point what is the key thing what is the key thing this author is trying to tell me now that is the main idea once you understand that you just tell, just just know that yes you found your main idea do you understand kimberly yes i do okay so we'll be seeing some some examples to so let's take a look this is our first passage 
So can you read through, Kimberly? Yes. When, I'm, when I am reading a poem, I rarely feel alone in the room. The poet and I are together. It's, a fifth, it's as if the po poet wrote his secret diary years ago. I am unlocking it as I sit alone and read. At times, I don't understand what a poem means. I just like the way it sounds or the strange images that it provokes. The world is so peculiar in a poem. At the same time, it is so enticing. Sometimes I understand exactly as if the poet is whispering to me, as if we shared the same experience. I must be fully concentrated on reading or I cannot enter the world of a poem. There are too many daily tasks to attend to. Tasks that are very far removed from the magic and, Im and imagination involved in a poem. On a cold, snowy day, I cuddle up inside my apartment and read and read. Then I'm free to write through the imagination of all those who came before me. Good. Okay, so now the question is, which of the following statements expresses the main idea? We have two options. We have the writer has a love for poetry or the writer cuddles up on a cold day to read. Kimberly, from all that you read, what is the main idea? Mm, number one, the writer has a love for poetry. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. That's that's beautiful. Good job. So if while we were reading through, we could see that everything that um, um, everything that the writer was trying to say was it his love for poetry. Even the fact that he was cuddled up in his apartment, he wasn't cuddled up in his apartment because um, um, he felt like cuddling up. He wasn't cuddled up in his apartment because he was he was excited or something. The main reason why he was cuddled up in, um, in his, inside his apartment was because he wanted to read. And what was he reading? Poem. You understand? So the main idea of all of this passage is the fact that the writer has a love for poetry. Good. So let's look at the second passage. So could you read that too, Kimberly? Ever since I was a child, I've been fascinated by the stars. Each night I would sneak out of bed and tiptoe to the window, pressing my face against the cold glass to gaze up at the twinkling sky. My parents would often find me there, lost in wonder and gently guide me back to bed. But even as I grew older, my fascination with the cosmos only deepened. I devoured books on astronomy, memorizing the names of constellations, and dreamed of one day exploring the universe myself. To me, the stars were more than just distant specks of light. They were portals to other worlds, mysteries waiting to be unraveled. And so every night, I still find myself drawn to the window, my eyes scanning the heavens, searching for answers to the questions that have captivated me since childhood. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so before I move to the question, um, you know, mm -hmm. the questions for the options. So before I even move to that, to that, Kimberly, what do you think is the main idea of this passage? Mm, the the person's um, love and fascination for the stars. Okay. <laughs> very good. Very good. Very good. Okay. So let's look at. So what would the answer be? I think you've answered that already. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So the writer was all, always being fascinated by the stars. That is the main idea. Every other thing he was doing when I was um, sneaking out of the bed, going outside, everything he was doing was because of he loved the stars. Mm -hmm. So every other information that was being given um, throughout the passage was still pointing to the fact, was backing up that point that, oh, see, oh, this author or this person, the person writing, love the stars. So finding the main idea in any passage is very, very easy, but you have to be very careful. You have to, you have to be very careful so you don't mix things up. You don't, you don't pick up um, 
some other ideas, maybe the supporting information or the supporting um, details and mix it up with the main idea. Sometimes the supporting details might seem like the main idea, but if you if you take your time, if you read the first time, the thing you should always that should always come to your mind is okay, what is this author trying to say? What is what is what is the most important thing that this author is trying to tell me? What is the most important thing that this author is trying to tell me? Now that is the main idea. <laughs> Very good. So let's move on. Since it's childhood. So this idea, you will see that throughout the passage, it, it kept it kept on popping up. That oh, this writer must love the stars. Hey, he's not eating. Okay, he loves the stars. Oh, he went out, he loves the stars. This one, he loves the stars. So everything he was saying, everything that the passage was saying was because the writer loved the stars. Okay, so let's let's move to um the third passage chan you're welcome okay so kimberly okay in the heart of the forest where the sunlight filters through the dense canopy of leaves there lies a hidden world teeming with life every step is met with a chorus of chirping birds and rustling leaves while the air is heavy with the scent, scent of earth and moss, here among the ancient trees and when, when, winding creeks, I find solace and tra tranquility like nowhere else. It's a place where time seems to slow down, allowing me to forget the worries of the outside world and simply be present in the moment. Whether I'm sitting by the babbling brook or exploring, or exploring the moss-covered trails, I feel a deep connection to nature that regenerates rejuvenates my soul. In the forest surrounded by towering trees in the symphony of the wild, I am reminded of the beauty and wonder of the natural world. Very good. So what is the main idea? Before I move to the um, the question, mm -hmm. while you are reading through, what do you think is the main idea? The author's deep appreci appreciation for the forest and the outside okay <laughs> so you can see it 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 seems um i would say it's very easy mm -hmm. they said a whole lot he said a whole lot about okay the birds he said a whole lot about the leaves but if you're talking about the birds and we're talking about the leaves they are in the forest you understand so everything mm -hmm. that um the hope everything that the passage was talking about was pointing to the forest everything he was talking about the ancient trees the creeks every single thing was talking about the forest so mm -hmm. that is how you know what the main idea is and to filter the main idea from every other um details in the story so we have the question, which of the following statement expresses the main idea? We can see it's the solace and the tranquility in the forest. So that is the main idea. Yes, it talks about um, the writer enjoying the birds. Yes, the birds singing and all. It talks about it, but that is not the main idea. That is not the main idea. It is not just the birds singing that the writer loves, but the birds singing in the forest. If the birds was, were singing, um, let's say, at his window, it wouldn't be so interesting for him <laughs> like when the birds are singing in the forest. So I hope you understand that, Kimberly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, um, so let's look at fourth passage so chan am i correct i want to be sure that i'm pronouncing your name correctly oops i can't hear you okay chan right do i think here okay 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 so 
Um, you came in quite late. So before you came in, we were talking about, okay, let me go back to, so today we are treating the main ideas and the details. And we've been able to go, um, we started with the main ideas. And we say that the main idea is the most important point or message yeah. in every passage that you read. Whenever you are reading through a passage, whenever you are reading through a story, whenever you are reading through um, a, a um, material, there is always um, the most important message, there's always the most important point that whosoever wrote that um, passage, whosoever wrote that story is trying to convey. Do you understand, Chai? Yeah. Okay, so and we said finding out the main idea in every passage is not so difficult. But the only thing is that when you are reading through every passage, the first question you should always ask yourself is, hello, you, you ask yourself, okay, what is this author trying to tell me? What is the author trying to tell me? What is the most important thing in all of these words that this author have written? What's the most important thing the author is trying to tell me? When you are able to kick that out, when you are able to pick that out, you've won the jackpot. Yes, you've been able to identify the main idea. Do you understand, Chan? Yeah. Okay, so, and we've been able to look at about four passages and Kimberly has been, has, has been doing a very in fact, she's done a very good job so far. Um, she's been able to read through all of these passages and she's been able to identify the main idea in each of this passage. So I would I would just um okay, you would read just this passage, then we would move on to the fifth passage that we were about reading. You yeah. understand? You you're the one that will answer it. So Chan, just read through this passage. And we'll move to the question. So let me hear you. Okay. Okay, so sorry, I'm trying to I don't know why my headphone would connect and then it would not connect again. Okay, so um okay. Now see what the problem is. So I've done that. Okay, so the question now. Oh, ah, so the answer. Okay, so Chan, what is the main idea? Which of the following statements expresses the main idea? Is it the writer? You said the writer has a dream. Very good. So that is the main idea. From all that we read, we can see that even when the writer was cutting up on cold days to read. He wasn't cutting up to read anything, but what he was cutting up to read was poems. So it's yeah. that simple. Do you understand, Chan? Yeah. Very good. Okay, so let's move to the last um, passage. Look, I don't think we've read this. Have we read this, Kimberly? Kimberly, have you read this? No, we haven't. No. Okay, okay, okay. So, Chan, let me hear you. Read this. Can we ask God that he was giving him favor upon creating with the eyes? Okay, that's in the last 
beautiful okay so so the question is now which of these following statements expresses the main idea from all that you read chan is it that she enjoys spending time outdoors or she has a vivid imagination and loves creating fantastical worlds what's your answer b Every has really been imagination and loves creating fantastical worlds. Mm, beautiful. <laughs> okay, so Kimberly, um, are you also going with that? Chan, are yes. you going with Chan? Okay, okay, so that, that's very beautiful. I'm so happy you're able to get that. So everything that this story was talking about, it was pointing to the fact that Emily's imagination is out of this world. So that was all the, um, that was all the passage was talking about. Okay, so let's move to the fifth passage. Let's move to the fifth passage. Chan, you still read this? Beautiful. Okay, so the question is now, the question is, um, which of the following statements expresses the main idea? Is it a clouded... Is it the clouded leopard is a skilled hunter or is it just the coat pattern that resembles the clouds? Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, so Kimberly, what would your answer be? It will be A too. Okay. okay, okay, beautiful. I'm so happy that you all are getting it really. You're making me so happy. So we've moved past the main idea. So we are moving to supporting details. So for every passage, we have the main idea and we have the supporting details. So once you are able to identify what the main idea is, so every other thing that is pointing towards the main idea that is giving you more information about the main idea is the supporting details. You understand, you know, there's some, there's some meals that you have, okay, okay, this is, you know that, okay, in, your, in that meal, this is the main, the main thing in that food, but there are some things, there are some things that they put in it that, oh, okay, let's just use that to support the meal, but there's the main meal. So that's the same thing with this way. When you've gotten the main idea in every passage, every other information you get points towards the main idea. Okay, so um, the supporting details in a passage is like the building blocks or the evidence that back up the main idea. They give more information, examples, or reason to help explain or prove the main points. So 
whatever it's saying, it will, it will be trying to prove the point. That main idea, it will be trying to prove the point. It could give examples. It could give. It could. It could give some explanations. It could just. All it's just trying to do is okay. Prove um, that main idea. It's trying to prove it to you. So to identify supporting details in the passage, look for sentences or paragraphs that provide extra information about the main idea about the main idea so these details could include like i said examples the facts statistics quotations descriptions all of this all 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 the supporting um details is trying to just do is to strengthen and also to clarify the main idea so that is what the supporting details um that is what they do do we understand okay so we'll be looking through the same passages we just read you understand so we'll be filtering um since we've been able to identify the main idea so we'll look at okay what and what is the supporting idea so we have some questions attached to each of these passages but before we even move to the questions we would be doing um on our own we'll be pointing out some sentences that are actually supporting um the main idea before we even move to the questions okay so the first passage okay so kimberly can you can you read again yes when i am reading a poem i rarely feel alone in the room the poet and i are together it's it's as if the poet wrote a, a secret diary years ago i am unlocking it as i sit alone and read at times, I don't understand what a poem means. I just like the way it sounds or the strange images that it provokes. The world is so peculiar in a poem. At the same time, it is so enticing. Sometimes I understand exactly as if the poet is whispering to me, as if we shared the same experience. I must be fully concentrated on reading or I cannot enter the world of a poem. There are too many daily tasks to attend to, tasks that are very far removed from the magic and imagination involved in a poem. On a cold, snowy day, I cuddle up inside my apartment and read and read. Then I am free to write through the imagination of all those who came before me. Okay, thank you so much, Kimberly. So uh, can we identify some sentences that are um, supporting the main idea? Because we know we were able to identify the main idea as, okay, the writers, love for poems so what are those things that are actually supporting that idea that oh this writer love poems can we identify that kimberly chan can you just point out some sentences there mm. the sentence oh, um, i have to get up these five people you said chan yeah i have to get up these five people but which which of the is it the first paragraph second third or fourth yeah first the poet this yeah. ah, pick it up hey. which of them said first this? First okay part. the first part okay 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 the okay hey. the poet. The poet. Hey. and i to get up at, at together okay 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 i got that okay good so kimberly what about you mine is also in the first paragraph it's okay at times i don't understand what a poem means i just like the way it sounds or the strange images that it provokes beautiful so we can see that all all of all of these things is still pointing to the fact that oh this person really love poems we can also see where he talks about him also cuddling up in his apartment not going anywhere just staying in his apartment and reading and reading so people will be in the apartment on a cold um snowy day and all they do is sleep 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 and sleep some other persons would eat eat and eat some other persons will watch the television but this young man or woman <laughs> All the person just all the person does during a cold and snowy day is read, and we can see that the person is reading poems. So this is also showing that oh, this person read really love to read poems. So we have our question now. Okay. 
So we have our question. So which of these details help you understand um, the writer's main point, which is the love for poems? So which of this? So we can see that is, they said, the writer feels poetry is filled with magic and um, imagination. So because, because the writer feels that poetry is filled with magic and imagination, that was that's 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 supporting that I would say it's it's one of the reasons why the writer loves poems because he feels okay. Um I can I can through poems I can imagine anything, I can I can see anything, even for me as a person. I, I love writing as well. And why I love writing, especially fictional um, um, stories, why I love writing it is because it, it, it pushes me to that place where I can imagine anything possible. Like there's, there's anything possible, anything, something that I'm even hoping that um, happens around me, I can actually put it in writing. And when I'm reading it, it feels to me that, oh, this thing has come alive. You understand? I'm able to bring my imaginations to life. You get it? So that's the same way the writer feels when he or she is reading poetry. He's able to go far. He's able to imagine things that are even not real. But when he's reading those poems, he's able to um, it feels so real to the um, writer. So let's look at the second um, passage. Chat, can you read this? I was just, I was just, I've been painted in by that test. It's not, I was just out of it. It's not, it's not, it's not, but it's my bed against the God because it gets out of drinking sky. My friends, we have this five meter, that's the mother, and then they can't be back to bed. But <laughs> Good. Okay, so um, which of these details helps you understand the writer's main points? Which of these details help you understand? Now, we know that um, one of the main points of this passage is the fact that the writer is fascinated by stars. He loves stars, like Stars, <laughs> he loves stars so much. So which of this um, helps you understand the writer's main point? What would your answer be? What would your answer be? Taking out of it, as I said, to get A or B? B. B? Okay. Okay, so Kimberly. Mm. B, also. Okay, beautiful. B. So yeah. the answer is B. That's good. Good job. I can see you all are getting the hang of all of it. Okay, so Kimberly. In the heart of the forest, where the sunlight filters through the dense canopy of leaves, there lies a hidden world teeming with life. Every step is met with a chorus of chirping birds and rustling leaves. While the air is heavy with the scent of earth and moss, here among the ancient trees and winding creeks, I find solace and tranquility like nowhere else. It's a place where time seems to slow down, allowing me to forget the worries of the outside world and simply be present in the moment. Whether I'm sitting by the babbling brook or exploring the moss-covered trails, I feel a deep connection to nature that reju rejuvenates my soul. In the forest surrounded by towering trees and the symphony of the wild, I am reminded of the beauty and wonder of the natural world. Beautiful. So, which of the following statements expresses the main idea? Mm, A. 
So Chan, what would you answer be A or B? Um, which one, Srika? Mr. Miller, you here. A or B? Uh, okay. Okay, beautiful. Smart. Smart. Well done. You're, you all are doing so great, Chan and Kimberly. You're doing so, so great. So A is um, a statement that is also giving us more details about the main idea. So the first passage, Chan, over to you. Okay, we want to read. Okay, I was trying to see what the in the of our question. We do have to other <laughs> Good. Very good. So which detail helps you understand the writer's main point? So it's supporting. Yeah. What is supporting? Yes. Okay. Okay, so B, right? B. Okay, said B. Okay, Kimberly, let's let's hear you. Are you also going with Chan? Mm, I'm going to go with A. Okay, so oh, it's B. <laughs> We, that was a nice try. That was a nice try. Okay, so the both of them seems like um like they're actually supporting it, but B is the answer, really. B is the answer because it's 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 that her um she always feels like she's living in a world of all creation. She 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 would spend hours this and that, but the key thing is. Even if we say she spent um, that our main idea, let's let's go back so we we'll see. Sorry. Remember. Mm. Very uh -huh. So sorry, let me go back. So we don't get okay. So she has a vivid imagination and loves creating these words. So what, what supports this idea? When she buries herself in books, so it really gives her off to imagine a lot of things. When she's reading, when she's reading, when you are reading books, when she's reading books, it, 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 it helps her to imagine anything, anything she feels like imagining, like I, like I told you of myself too, anything I want to imagine. Once I'm writing, I'm also reading. It takes me to walls I have never been, places I have never been, or I, I might never even be. It takes me to those places. Okay, so this is the fifth passage, Kimberly. And I think this is the last one. So please read. In the dense jungles of Southeast Asia, a creature of extraordinary beauty and agility roams the forest canopy. The clouded leopard with its striking coat pattern with swirling clouds and, and sleek muscular build. The clouded leopard moves with unmatched grace among the treetops. Its keen eyesight and sharp claws make it a formidable formidable hunter capable of navigating the labyrinth of branches with ease as it pursues its prey. Yet despite its predatory prowess, the clouded leopard is also a creature of mystery and elusiveness, rarely spotted by human eyes. In the depths of the jungle, the clouded leopard embodies the spirit of wilderness 
a symbol of both power and stealth in its natural habitat. Beautiful. So the question now is, which of these details help you understand the writer's main points? Mm, A. A, okay. Chad. What do you think, Sri? Which one? A. A. Okay. I knew that both of us, both of you would choose A. But the thing is, for me, though the answer is B, and also A is also the answer because it's also giving you um A is also giving you some details about the main point. But if you remember, we said the main point, the main point of this um story talks about let me let me go back. So, a skilled hunter, a skilled hunter in the Southeast Asian jungles. So, what is supporting that idea? What is supporting that idea? Both the coat pattern, the sleek muscular build. I would say for the sleek muscular build and also the striking coat pattern yes is actually supporting the idea that is a hunter and also this elusiveness and the embodiment of the spirit of the wilderness so the two of them would stand as also the supporting idea yeah a and b would go so now for the class work ah, okay i think i will send that i would have loved to share it though at least let's just have a look uh, okay, I'm coming. Let me share that. It's a it's a form. Let me share my. Let me stop sharing this. Let me share that screen so we'll be able to see it. Give me a minute. So you are expected to answer it. I made the passages the, while why the passages in um these slides are quite short, but the passages in the um in the form. They are not, they are, I wouldn't say they are not so long, but they are not so short at the same time. You understand? Let me share it so that we'll have a look. Good. so the thing is for these passages it's it's not it's you see a whole lot of questions some questions that point to the main ideas some questions that talk about the supporting details if you take your time to read it read the passage you should be able to you can see like i said it's not too short and it's not too long you understand Mm -hmm. So I think there are about maybe four four passages. Let me just pick any answer. And the thing about it is that once you are done, once you are done with it, you'll see the right answers, okay? So if you have any question, you can always, if you have any question, you can always ask. Yes. So once you are done with the um, tests, once you are done with the classwork, you'll see your answers. So if we go, if you answer it maybe before the next class, which is on Wednesday, if there are any questions, if there are any part of the thing you don't, um, that's part of the class work you don't understand, you can always drop your, I'm available, I'm on that group with two people. So just drop anything I need clarification. Oh, I didn't understand this part. I don't know why it was like this. I don't know why it was like that. I will be more than happy to help you. Do you understand Kimberly and Chan? Yes. Okay. So I will send the link to the group. So feel free to um, answer it today, tomorrow, or please do that before our next class, which is on Wednesday. Okay. So we'll be calling it a day.
So thank you all. Do you have any question? Please ask your questions before we um, go. Kimberly, do you have any question? Is there anything that is so confusing? No, not really. Chan? No. no. We are good to go, right? Okay. Yes. Okay. No. All right. Okay. All right then. Okay. So, so see you all on Wednesday. But before Wednesday, like I said, feel free to ask your questions. Or if there's anything you need clarification on, I'll be more than happy to help you. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Okay, also we can join the social studies class now. <laughs>